everyone today we are looking at the compound angle formula so these would be used in proving trig identities if you look at our last video tutorial we did an introduction to basic trig identities and from there we are introducing some formulas that is used for compound angles so we have Compound angle, meaning that in the bracket, say instead of just sine theta or cos theta or tan theta, we have a sum of two angles. So we have sine of angle A plus angle B, cos of angle A plus angle B, tan of angle A minus B, and so on. So for each combination, we have a formula or an identity that can be used. So sine of A plus B is identical to sine A cos B plus sine b cos a. Sine of a minus b is identical to sine a cos b minus sine b cos a. So it's very similar to the first one, but we have different signs. For cos, we have cos of a plus b is identical to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And cos A minus B is the same as the previous one with the exception of the signs being different. Tan A plus B is equal to tan, uh, tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. Tan of A minus B is identical to tan A minus tan B over 1 plus tan A tan B. So for each pair, it, the formulas are very sim similar with the exception of the signs being different. These formulas for the compound angles are provided in the formula sheet for CSEC ADMATS. Example 1. Prove the identity that sine of A plus B over cos A cos B is identical to tan A plus tan B. And just as we looked at in our previous tutorial to prove an identity, I started looking at one side of the identity and using our necessary formulas or identities that we have learned to substitute and simplify expand brackets whatever we need to do in order to eventually get the result on the other side of the identity so i'm going to start with the left hand side so the left hand side i have sine a plus b over cos a cos b and using the compound angle formula for the numerator sine a plus b can be expressed as sine a cos b plus sine b cos a so all we did in this first step is just to use a compound angle formula for the numerator so if i split up the fraction then i would have this term sine a cos b over the denominator plus the second part of it the sine b cos a over the same denominator when we do that, then we can cancel the cos b in the first fraction and the cos a's from the second fraction. After cancelling those terms and simplifying, we'll end up with sine a and cos a in the first fraction plus sine b over cos b in the second fraction. And we know that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So similarly, sine a over cos a will give us tan a and sine b over cos b will give us tan b and this is what we need to prove it is the right hand side of our identity as shown in the first line so therefore our identity is proven example two prove the identity cos a plus b by sine a minus b is identical to sine a cos a minus sine b cos b so again, we are starting with one side of the identity. I have chosen to start with the left-hand side. And we have two compound angle formulas being necessary here. We have the cos A plus B, and then we also have the sine of A minus B. It will be helpful to have your notes with you that I have sent when looking at the video so that you can compare what I have with the angles that's written on your notes. So cos of A plus B, using our compound angle formula, will give us cos a cos b minus sine a sine b in the first bracket and then we have the sine a minus b giving sine a cos b minus sine b cos a i just chose to use different colors so that you can see that the purple 
represents the cos of a plus b and the orange represents the sine of a minus b using the compound angle formulas. So next we are going to expand brackets. When we are expanding brackets just as we have learned in maths, each term in the first bracket must be multiplied by each term in the second bracket. So this first term cos a cos b that is one term. This is being multiplied by the first term in the other bracket and then by the second term in the other bracket. Then this minus sine a sine b is being multiplied by both terms in the second bracket. And this will give us this expression. So after we have expanded brackets, our next step would be to simplify. So if I simplify each term, looking at this term here, we see that I have a cos b and a cos b twice. So that can be simplified to give us cos squared b. Looking at our second term, we see that we have a cos a and a cos a. So that can be simplified to give cos squared a. The order in which we write the other terms is not important because multiplication is commutative. So it doesn't matter if I write the sine and then the cos. Then the third term, we see that we have a sine a and a sine a. Sorry. Sine a and sine a, so that gives us sine squared a. The rest remains the same, so we still have the sine b cos b here. Then in the last term, we have a sine b and a sine b, so that gives us sine squared b, and the sine a cos a is still remains the same there. So this first line is the same as the previous line that we looked at. I just stated it again at the top so we can see how we work forward from here. So we are going to rearrange. So in rearranging, we are putting similar terms together. So from this first term, we can see that we have a sine a cos a. Then in the last term, we also have a sine a cos a. So I'm putting these two terms together, the first one and the last one. And then from the other two in the middle, both of them has a sine b cos b in common. So after we rearrange and factorize, from the first term, we can factorize the sine a cos a. After doing that in brackets, we'll be left with cos squared b plus sine squared b. And from the second pair of terms, which is the screen bracket, we have the sine b cos b in common and the negative sign as well. So I'm factorizing minus sine b cos b and I'll be left with cos squared b plus sine squared b. And we have learned this identity from our previous tutorial as well that cos squared plus sine squared is identical to 1 or sine squared plus cos squared is identical to 1, that's the same. So that means this bracket is equal to 1 and this bracket is also equal to 1. So we have sine a cos a by 1 minus sine b cos b by 1 and just simplifying anything multiplied by 1 is itself so that gives us our final line and this is the right hand side of the identity so it is proven. Example 3. Prove that tan of a plus pi over 4 is identical to sine a cos a my all over cos a minus sine a. So in this bracket, we can have any letter, any, any constant, any angle or variable that can be used. And it is just to apply our knowledge of the compound angle formula and simplify. So I'm starting with the left hand side, tan of a plus pi over 4. So we can just use, look at our formula for tan of a plus b, in which b is pi over 4. That will give us tan a plus tan of pi over 4 all over 1 minus tan e tan pi over 4. Since pi over 4 is equal, tan of pi over 4 is equal to 1, that can be done into your calculators or from the table that we have looked at with the third form of the special angles, we get that tan of pi over 4 is equal to 1. Then I can replace this pi over 4 to give 1 and this pi over 4, tan of pi over 4, would also give 1. So then this can be simplified to give us tan of a plus 1 over 1 minus tan a. Now I'm going to use the identity that tan theta is identical to sine theta over cos theta. The reason why we are introducing the sine theta over cos theta is because if you look at the first line of the question or the example, on the right hand side I have an expression with sine and cos, I do not have any terms with tan on the right hand side. 
which means that I do have to convert the tan A's to the sine A over cos A. So if I do that, then I would have for this first one, sine, sine, this is supposed to be sine A over cos A, plus 1 all over 1 minus sine A over cos A. So that's just a minor error where I replaced A by theta, what is supposed to be the letter A for this particular question. So finding the LCM in the numerator and denominator separately and simplifying. So for this line, we, we can take the numerator separately, take the denominator separately, simplify each one on its own and then put it back together. Or we can just work it all together in one step. I have chosen to just work it into one big fraction. So in the numerator here, our this can be considered as sine A over cos A plus 1 over 1. So our LCM being cos A. And then cos A into cos A is 1. 1 by sine A is sine A. 1 into cos A would be cos A. Cos A by 1 is cos A. So we get this numerator. Then looking at the denominator part of it, our LCM would be cos theta, sorry, cos A. So we would have, when we simplify, cos A minus sine A over cos A. Now when we are dividing by a fraction, we have learned that we can just change the sign to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction, or in other words, flip the fraction, change the sign. So instead of having this fraction divided by this fraction, I'm going to invert the fraction and change the sign to multiply. When we do that, we see that the cos E and the cos E would cancel. And then this gives us the right hand side of our identity sine a plus cos a over cos a minus sine a so it is proven there was a minor error in the question itself here it's an enumerator it's supposed to be sine a plus cos a application of the compound angle formulae so just to recap that we have learned this table from our previous tutorial where we have the sine, cos, and tan of the special angles, which gives the exact value in seed form. So with this knowledge, we can move forward to find the exact values of sine, cos, and tan of a given angle without the use of a calculator. So example one, find the exact value of sine 75. Now we want to use our knowledge of compound angle formulae as well as our special angles here. So that means that I want to change each angle given to two angles being added or subtracted in which the two angles would be two of these given so that I can use our answer here in seed form. So we have 30, 45, 60, and 90 for degrees. So the 75 degrees I'm going to express as 45 plus 30. 45 plus 30 is 75. The reason why we have chosen on the 45 plus 30 again is because I said that we want to choose a, a sum of two angles that we know the exact value in state form. So between 30, 45, 60, and 90, we want to choose two of those angles. And the only two of these that would be added to give 75 would be the 30 and 45. So using the identity sine of a plus b is identical to sine a cos b plus sine b cos a we would have sine 45 cos 30 so all our a's are 45 b is 30 so just replacing the a's and b's in the formula we have sine 45 cos 30 plus sine 30 cos 45 and using the table of the special angles we have Sine 45 would be root 2 over 2, multiply, cos 30 would be root 3 over 2, sine 30 would be a half, and cos 45 root 2 over 2. And simplifying this first pair, we would have root 6, so root 2 multiplied by root 3 will give root 6, and in the denominators, 2 multiplied by 2 will give 4. For the second pair of terms, in the numerator, 1 multiplied by root 2 would give root 2, 2 multiplied by 2 would give 4, we are adding fractions with the same denominator, similar to if I have 2 over 7 plus 3 over 7. We just add the numerators to get 5 over 7. It's the same. We have the same denominator, so we just add the numerators, root 6 plus root 2. 
or from this line here we can simplify it a little bit differently so instead of having root 2 multiplied by root 3 being root 6 I could have just left it as root 2 by root 3 and then when we add them I factorize a root 2 to give us root 2 open bracket root 3 plus 1 all over 4 all right so both of these answers are correct unless a format for the answer is specified then you would choose the appropriate way of representing your answer Example 2. Find the exact value of cos of pi over 12 without the use of a calculator. So again, for this part of it, we want to use one of the compound angle formulas with cos. And where we have a plus b, we are going to replace that by two angles from the table of special angles, which we have learned for radians. So I'm just going back to that one. So from this table, we see that in terms of radians, the angles that I need to use would be pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. So I need to choose two of these, two out of these four, that when added or subtracted will give me the pi over 12. And the two angles that is appropriate here would be the pi over 4 and pi over 6. So pi over 4 minus pi over 6, if we look at it in terms of a fraction, consider a quarter minus 1 over 6, that will give us 1 over 12. All right, so pi over 4 minus pi over 6 gives pi over 12. So that means I'm using the compound angle formula for cos of A minus B. In terms of A being pi over 4 and B would be pi over 6, I'm just replacing the A's and B's by these two terms. So this will give us cos of pi over 4, cos of pi over 6, plus sine of pi over 4, sine of pi over 6. Cos of pi over 4 from the table of special angles would give us root 2 over 2. Cos of pi over 6 from that table gives us root 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 4, root 2 over 2, sine of pi over 6 would be a half. So I'm going to simplify each pair of terms to give root 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4. In simplifying each term, I'm just multiplying the numerators from both of them. So root 2 multiplied by root 3 will give root 6. Then the denominator is 2 multiplied by 2 gives 4. From the second pair, root 2 multiplied by 1 is root 2. Denominators 2 multiplied by 2 will give 4. And our final answer would be root 6 plus root 2 all over 4. And if we would like to simplify it further, we could just factorize a root 2 from there to give root 3 plus 1 all over 4 in and this answer is coincidentally the same as the previous one so just to recap for the compound angle formula we have three pairs two for sine two for cos two for tan and the compound angle deals with two angles being added or subtracted mainly our angles a and b and these formulas can be used for trig identities and also the compound angle formula can be used to find the exact value of an expression without the use of the calculator. So that means that we are using the special angles in said form. So our next tutorial would focus on double angle formulae. There are also some other identities that we would need to know and have further identities to prove. So thank you for watching the video. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. An assignment will be posted shortly. Thank you.